Welcome everyone. We're going to review the progress report cheat sheet quickly. The top of the form contains basic information about the student. The date should be the date that the report is generated or sent. The reporting period would be the first quarter, second quarter, interim, or whatever recording periods you use for report cards and progress reports. The IEP date is exactly that. The goal number goes here, and then the entire goal should be um, represented in this box. You will report on only one objective per page, so the objective number is here, and the one objective you are referencing would go in this box. Let's move down and look closer at the table. The top section is for reporting on the goal. Summarize the measurable data utilized to assess progress. This is where you report on the student's current level of functioning as compared to the goal mastery from the IEP itself. We're going to scroll down and take a look at a closer definition of this. Again, you will report a comparison between the expected target and the student's current functioning. For example, John's goal is to read 36 words per minute with less than three errors. He is currently reading 22 words per minute with less than four errors and making adequate progress. This section is also where the team uh, or the teacher reporting should report on any anomalies such as early mastery of a goal or no or limited progress towards a goal you should define what is happening and any factors that may be contributing to a lack of progress and what is being done to address those. Or if a student masters a goal early, the team needs to determine if the goal should be revised and made more uh, rigorous or if a new goal is appropriate. That information would also be reported here. If we look down under data points, this table is used to report on progress on the goal and one objective. The first line is for you to report whether or not the student is on track for achieving the goal. You will click yes or no and whether or not the goal has been met. The next line is to report on the objective. Is the student on track for achieving the objective? You will click yes or no. And you can ignore the remaining boxes under goal met because you only need to report on the goal once. The other lines within the table are intended to report the data source and the data points. Data source is simply the method you identified in the IEP by which you are monitoring progress. Those are items A through K in section six. Curriculum-based assessment, checklist, observation, running records, inventory, etc. You will list the methods here and then provide a summary of the data points here. You do not have to report every single data point within a grading period. You simply need to provide a summary. For example, curriculum-based assessments may look like weekly fluency checks in the classroom. You would simply indicate that and include dates and scores. If you are taking daily data on a teacher-created data chart, which would be a checklist or an inventory, you would simply list checklist and say daily progress checks and then put where the student is at. If observations are done, you can simply list the dates of the observations. The comment section, again, is where you would make uh, any reference to special factors or uh, levels of prompting that may be needed or anything else that is relevant to the student's progress. This section, as I said, is meant for only one objective. The multiple lines are there so that you can report on the various methods and the data points 
aligned to those methods. You will notice that there is nowhere in the table to distinguish between data points for the goal versus data points for the objective. You may choose to list the goal data points first and the objective underneath, but it really doesn't matter to the state that that's defined as much as the fact that you have the data reported. So again, there's nowhere to distinguish that and you do not need to distinguish between them necessarily. Once you have reported on the goal and the objective, you can click the tab to add new objective in order to generate a new table in which you can report on any subsequent objectives or benchmarks. You only have to report on the goal once. Once you have completely reported on a goal and any of its objectives or benchmarks, you can click the tab here to add a new goal, which will generate an entirely new sheet. Finally, districts may choose whether or not to use the new OP6A progress report. However, please remember that because the state has indicated that these components must be addressed, then if a district chooses to use a different form, they must ensure that all of the required components are contained within whatever form they are using. That's everything about our cheat sheet and we hope you will find it helpful.